What's up, Fit Fam? This is Giovanni of Geo's Logic, your host of Fitness Junkies. Today, I hope you this 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 video meets you in good health and spirit. And if not, I hope it inspires you to do something about it. I'm really excited about my guest today. Um, he's a coach. He's a uh, bodybuilder. He's an entrepreneur and. Um, uh, he has a lot of knowledge that he's going to drop on you guys today, so get ready for it. How are you doing today, Doc? Doing amazing. Thank you for having us on the show. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I always ask my guests, because the fitness junkie mentality is one usually that starts early on in life, um, what is your journey um, from as a kid to now to, to, to where you're, how'd you get into fitness and what does it mean to you? Well, uh, for me, <clears throat> I was born and raised in Texas, and that sports is part of the life there. And some people even think, you know, football's a religion in Texas. But for me, uh, it's just started basically with wrestling and football. I got into wrestling as a very young child, um, and then that graduated into, you know, Pop Warner or Junior League football. And then football increased. Uh, football was probably my best way to further my life and my career. But wrestling is probably my true love. Awesome. Now, um, so you played uh, football and wrestling. Um, what, like, got you into bodybuilding and changing people's life through fitness? Well, you know, that's, it's actually kind of funny because <clears throat> I never considered myself uh, to be able to have the ability to be a bodybuilder or to have that type of physique. Um, you know, growing up in Texas, I was a Houston Oilers fan. And then way back when the Houston Oilers got sold and they turned into the Tennessee Titans. And that kind of crushed my soul. Right. So I just pretty much gave up on football at the time. Oh, wow. So yeah. that's been a while. Yeah. I, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I watched a football game. Wow. That's crazy. But um, it was funny because even during that period, I have a few pictures of me just from high school, but I would walk around with an Arnold shirt. I'd walk around with Frank Zane stuff. So those guys were my heroes. So, it, you know, it wasn't, you know, football players that, you know, inspired me to be better physically or whatever. It was those guys that I looked up to. And, you know, I wanted to, okay, I'm going to lift harder like this because you can put that, visu that visual attention to, okay, they're lifting. Way back when, you didn't see the football players or the pros in, the, in their training rooms, you know, working out. They were just out on the field. Right. So, um, for me, I mean, I always sports was – I was an orphan, and sports for me was an escape. It was a reason to not be just average. Uh, I was probably better than average as an athlete as a kid, and uh, I had an opportunity to go down and try to get a Division One football scholarship, and that just didn't pan out. <clears throat> so, what position? Middle linebacker. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it, uh, I mean, so when I graduated from high school, I was 6'2", 275, middle linebacker, and I was running like 4'3", I mean, I was keeping up with line, with the uh, running backs. That's that's a that's a great package to deliver. I, that's amazing that you yeah. didn't make it. I couldn't cut, but I could straight ahead. Right. I was fast. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Right. But, um... Things didn't pan out, but uh, for me, they panned out perfect. So when that opportunity to play Division One ball fell through, I just said, well, you know what? I want to be a doctor anyways. And I didn't have any real backing or support, so I just went to the military and became a medic. Got it. And then I figured, you know, later down the road, uh, you know, maybe I could go to medical school or become a nurse or a nurse anesthetist or physician's assistant, something like that. But my military career as a medic was fulfilling, satisfying, 
And I mean, I was good. And is that how you adopted the nickname? Doc. Doc? Yeah, so all medics, usually if the unit's there with and you prove yourself, that's when they start calling you Doc. Got it. Until then, it's like medic or corpsman or whatever. Right, right. So I was in the Navy, which is a Navy corpsman. And then I was assigned to Marine Corps units. So I augmented and facilitated Marine Corps infantry and stuff like that. So did you go into the shit? Did you? Were you? Yeah. Which? I've, uh, over the years, I was in several different theaters and took uh took part of some changing stuff in history so like what i'm so curious well i was in iraq for probably nine years whoa and then i did a tour or so in afghanistan but i went to the original desert storm um there was a thing this is dating myself but well, I, I'm in, right the, with you, bro. <laughs> in the 80s uh president reagan uh, there were oil tankers coming in and out of the Gulf. And he had made a special mission to protect oil tankers coming in and out because they were being attacked by supposedly Iranian insurgencies or stuff like that. So that was called Operation Earnest Will. And they just reflagged tankers. And I was part of a unit that would basically provide protection and escort them through the Gulf, through the Straits of Hormuz, and out into the Indian Ocean so that they could do their trade routes and whatever else. So you had a major career in the forces. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting. It yeah. was good. And so how did you get to be a, a coach and competitor? And, like, what was that transition? So <clears throat> um, we got to jump forward a little bit. Kay. So I was also a civilian contractor. Okay. And doing the same thing I did in the military. But uh, I was in Iraq and I was a subcontractor for the State Department. And uh, some things had happened and I wasn't able to return back to that type of work. And I came back to the States <clears throat> and uh, I kind of went down a black hole, mm. a little rabbit hole for a little while. I decided to, hey, I'm gonna get some help, start to get things growing again. And uh, you know, I'd always, you always go back to what you know. So I started back in the gym. I was severely overweight. I had some issues with uh, substance abuse and <clears throat> just really found home being back in the gym. And then, you know, not, it was just an escape. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, went, I was at this one gym at the time and it was a dirty old rusty, weights are nasty, the floor right. was dirty. Right. Rusty. A real gym. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there were some bodybuilding prep coaches in that gym, but I was just hanging out by myself. And uh, I was pretty uh, introverted, kind of reclusive. And this one trainer at this gym, I actually didn't like him at all. <laughs> but he came up to me one day and he's like, hey, you ever thought about bodybuilding? And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, you becoming a bodybuilder. And I was like, there's no way I could ever look like that or do that. And the guy's like, okay, first of all, you could totally look like that. <laughs> and he goes, you could probably be very, very successful. And at the time, I was in my mid-40s. And I was like, no way. Right. But he kept kind of badgering me, and we didn't like each other. Right. So we would give each other <laughs> hell about it, you know what I mean? Right. And then finally, I was like, okay, bucket list. One and done, I'll do it. And uh, so over that time, uh, I had become a personal trainer. But, you know, in my brain, it was like I just wanted to deal with fat dads and soccer moms. Right. Stay for four or five hours, augment my income, and go home. And I was good, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it. I wasn't trying to reinvent the wheel. I wasn't trying to impress anybody. I just wanted to make a little bit extra cash and... And then uh, I started reading about it, and uh, I didn't know anything about coaching, coaches, bodybuilding, how it went. And so I trained myself. And uh, 
it was an eye-opening experience. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> so, you know, uh, considering the things that had led up to that, you know, I was severely overweight. I had gotten rid of the substance abuse issue. And uh, so I prepped myself, and I was like, all right, th here's the show, and I'm going to go do it. And at the time, you know, you're proud of yourself. You're making advancements. Mm -hmm. And, I, th you know, I thought I was a rock star. Right. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm back. Right. <laughs> so I got 34th out of 34 my first show. <laughs> yeah. It was the best, worst day of my life right. as far as athleticism. Right. That's great. Yeah. And then it was going to be a bucket list, one and done. And then... Uh, you got the bug. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was just like, um, no, I'm not going to accept that. Right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. No worries. Um... So we trained again, and uh, I got I did another like 24, 25 week prep, and started learning more and more and more, and I got in the top ten on my second show, and I was like, okay, this could possibly do this, and then I was like, well, we're working it out, figuring it out. So then I did another show, and I got into the top five and was pretty successful, and then. I started really transforming, understanding the mechanics, mechanism of action, and then learning technique, learning nutrition, and you know, just from trial and error, and okay, this is what works, this is what doesn't work. And you know, with understanding through my medical background, human physiology, anatomy, how things work, I think that's what gave me a little bit of an advantage on that. Mm -hmm. And then farther down the road, when I actually decided to become a prep coach, then it really kicked in. So I got into it at a late age. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think I'm pretty successful as a um, bodybuilding coach. I think I have a good reputation. You know, I'm not a guru. I'm not one of the guys that brings 75 people to the show. And, right. But when my people show up at shows, those gurus know I'm there. Nice. And they're like, their people don't go home with my people's trophies. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was, you know, looking through your Instagram, which I like because it's really different than most people's. And um, not only do you have a lot of diverse clients, um, it looks like you have soccer moms and uh, competitors. And it seems like mostly women but there's a few men sprinkled in is that kind of the the general? it's just it's the ebb and flow of what's going on right now so uh i have and i you know i've i have to compartmentalize things so how my brain works but so i have the athlete side of the house which is team zone okay and then i have a health and wellness side of the house which i call heritage global and Arite is just a Greek word that means living the best of your life and that ability. Love so it. I just named the health and wellness side of the house Arite. But um, I have way more health and wellness clients than uh, athletes. I have some incredible health and wellness clients that literally could walk on stage in two or three weeks. Right. They just don't want to. Right. And that's okay because bodybuilding is not for everybody. Right. Um, and then I have some very, very successful athletes. I have, uh, I've had the honor and privilege of turning a good amount pro. Uh, I've turned some pro in the IFBB. I've turned a couple pro in the WBFF. I've turned some pro in the I, uh, IFN and then ICC, OCB. And then I have, but I have successful athletes and health and wellness clients globally. Yeah, that's what I was noticing. You were at one convention, I think it was in Orange County, and you were taking pictures like with your friends, and it was like, I follow her, I follow her. It's like, how does he know her? Yeah. You have a, like, you, is that, and they're from different states, so do you do a lot of, um, online coaching as well? I do. Um, I would say probably 90% of my clientele is online. Oh, wow. So I have clients in 
all those in the United States and all many, many different states. But I have clients in Canada, Australia, South Africa, Brazil, Thailand, England. Wow. Uh, and then I, I train some military people while they're deployed. So even though they're not considered overseas, they're still in other countries. One of the girls, I forget her name, I think her last name is Slayer. Lori. Lori Slayer, yeah. So she's not my athlete, but oh. her and I are really good friends. So I had a bodybuilding show of my own for about four years. Okay. And Lori was coming into bodybuilding and she was in the figure classification. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but Lori was doing figure and I had just seen her. She's somewhat of, a, you know, she's a social media influencer. And congratulations as well. She just turned uh, wellness pro yeah. in uh, December. Yeah. But um, Lori is a good friend of mine. Uh, we talk. I'm a second pair of eyes for her sometimes, or just calming her down. But we're just good friends. Oh, cool. Yeah. It was um, um, because we met at you know my my business partner John's uh, uh charity event right. in here in Vegas. And I knew you were a trainer, but I didn't really know what your reach was. And it was kind of when I reconnected with you accidentally, I was like, oh, my God, you're you have a really good network of clients and friends. And, and it was it was really I was excited to really get to know you instead yeah. of just. Hey, right. dude. <laughs> yeah. So um, so. One of the things I like to understand, um, you know, I'm a coach as well. Um, I have my own philosophy. What is your general philosophy? You might have two. You might have one for your athletes and one for your, your health and wellness. But what is your over uh, philosophy? Well, for me, um, it's kind of comes from my medical background. So I try to think about the big picture. And try to think about longevity and health is always a priority to me. So, you know, in that medical genre where you take a, uh, a medical oath to do no further harm. Mm. I mean, anybody can lift a bunch of weight, whether they lift it the correct way or in a manner that won't cause them harm or hurt. That's different. But, um, you know, for the aesthetics, the bodybuilding side of it or aesthetic sports, you know, there's everybody has their own style. I think mine's more catered towards volume, a lot of reps, a lot of sets, perfect form. I'm a stickler for form. I mean, I'll stop you dead in your tracks. And I mean, I even watch my people when they post stuff and I'll be like, hey, <laughs> you know what? Why don't, why don't we re, you know, why don't you come in for some one on one so we can fix this? Right. right. But really, it's about their longevity and about, I want to convince them more to do a lifestyle. Yeah. It's because I don't believe in that. It's a diet, it's workouts, it's a meal plan, it's purposeful action, it's thought process. And, you know, like I'm in my mid 50s and I ache and pain all day long. Yep. And, you know, had I known in seventh grade lifting weights for wrestling, how to do this form a little bit better. Number one, I think I would have better muscle maturity now. I would have less injury. I would have less, you know, I wouldn't be eating ibuprofen like Pez every day. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So for me, that's what it's about. Uh, I really try to look on the nutrition side of it. Uh, and, you know, as a trainer yourself, I mean, 50% of our job is psychological. Yeah. I mean, and it's not necessarily that they need to have their hand, hand held and they need to be, but there's days they don't want to do it. Yep. And whether it's, you know, a younger client who's more in the immediate gratification right. type thing, or it's an older client that doesn't have the uh, confidence, or whether it's, you know, somebody who has truly issues. Have bad food relationships, uh, psychological, you know, whether they were always kept under the thumb and said, you'll never amount to anything. 
I try to I try to bring them to a point where they believe in themselves, where they believe in what they can do. And when I came up with I came up with a business model when I became a um, when I decided, okay, this is really what I want to do. And then when I fell in love with it, but I, I mean, I usually do an interview with most of my clients or athletes, some manner. So whether it's on WhatsApp live or FaceTime live, or they come to the house to our gym. Um, my, my motto is I want to teach you so well that you don't need me. Mm, I, I want to work myself out of a job. Right. And that's truly, I mean, I believe that with all that I am. Yeah, that's I mean, good stuff. And knowledge should be shared, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and they then become your biggest advertisers. Absolutely. Because <laughs> they're a walking advertisement usually when they leave you, if, if the relationship went well. Right. Um, so you keep referencing your home and your gym and it sounds like they're one and the same. How did that happen? I know you, you trained in gyms before. How did you end up yeah. at home? <laughs> so when I, I used to train in Texas, okay. and then some things went down, and I decided to move here. And uh, I, had a, I had a gym that I was pretty stable at in Texas, and we were good to go, and I had built my reputation as a coach, as a personal trainer. And then when I moved here, I was, you know, I had already had clients here that were training online, but I didn't have a home gym. And then I don't know, I mean, hopefully you know, but Iris Kyle, Iris Kyle's a 10 time Miss Olympia. She is the female version of Arnold. Yep, yep. So she and black, her- Black woman, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So she and her partner, who now have the powerhouse gym, Yep. they were training at City Gym. And you know, Iris- Jay Jung. Correct. <laughs> so Iris called me up one day and she's like, hey, I know you're a good trainer. Why don't you come train out at City? So when I, I got here, I started training at City. And then <clears throat> I didn't like that environment. And so I decided I was going to try to move towards something else, a different way to make that happen. And then unfortunately, COVID right around the time I started building up speed and I was thinking, okay, it's going to go my direction. Then, you know, COVID hit. Yeah. And, you know, I had a lot of athletes again, globally. I had athletes here locally in the Vegas area. And then I was training a lot of people that work in the industry, uh, you know, with the pools and nightclubs oh, right. and stuff right. like that. Got it. Got it. So, well, when the strip closed down, and all this stuff went down, I went from making a significant monthly income to thinking, oh, uh, shit. how am I gonna keep my car? Right, <laughs> oh shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So uh, luckily, I had a few really loyal- uh, Fitness um, junkies. Yeah. <laughs> they had to keep working out. <laughs> right, and you know, out of all gratitude, I you know I don't want to sound like opportunistic, but thank God that they were financially and able to continue, because they literally drugged me through that part of my life. Yeah. So you know it was hard. I get a um. I get a disability check every month, so I would never like. I I'll have ramen, right. <laughs> you know, if this right. ever happens again. Right. But um, you go from grass fed to <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. You know, uh, but then COVID happened, and you know, I mean, I don't want to get political or whatever, but look what that did to us as a society. I mean, people were panicked, people were saving their money, people were like, it's the end of days, yeah, all that, and you know, nobody wanted to train, yeah. But then, what was kind of cool. I think is, do you remember like in March or April of 2020, all of a sudden everybody was challenging each other. Let's do 50 push push-ups. Yeah. Let's yeah. do 60 sit-ups. Yeah. Let's do this, whatever. Yeah. But I think that really inspired the home gym kind of attitude. Oh yeah. Like if the gyms are going to close down, what am I going to do? Because there are fitness junkies that, you know, 
hey, rain or shine, I'm going to try to get mine in. Yeah, I went out and bought weights, and I had John and Vanessa come over, and they, like other friends were like, we came over and worked out. I mean, I didn't have a big set like what you have, but uh, not go to the gym? Like, that's not even a <laughs> possibility. Right. <laughs> well, and it was funny because when this all broke down, Michelle and uh, my sister, Jennifer, I got them together and I said, hey, look, I don't think this is just going to be a two-week bubble. And I think what we need to do, but we literally went out to a park and we took some dumbbells with us and bands like that you could get from Walmart or Dick's Sporting Goods or whatever. And we filmed probably 50 videos. And I just said, I'm going to put it out on social media so that people know, hey, there's another alternative. Right. And I put that out on my social media on all of them. And I just said, here, here's some ideas. Use them if you want. If not, then don't. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So then you started collecting more equ equipment? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. So, But remember, remember weights used to be 75 cents or a buck a pound. Right. Yeah, you know, and all of a sudden they're 450 a pound. Because you know. they were scarce. Yeah. They got, they, everything got scarce there. I, I was buying rubber you know, plates, right. bump, bump, bumper plates out of like the back of trunks, like a drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. For Love real. It. I, I mean, I, you know, I was searching marketplace, I was right. searching offer up, whatever. And like one, like it was this clandestine, like, oh, you, and then when you get here, you got to flash <laughs> your lights. And I'm like, dude, they're just bumper plates. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And then he, you know, 400 bucks. For two forty-five pound plates, I was like, oh, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> but uh, and the good, the best part, the gooder, <laughs> the best part is Michelle was when it was breaking down. I had a couple athletes that were getting ready to do shows, and all of a sudden, all the gyms are closed, the shows are shut down. Michelle is living proof that you can compete in a bodybuilding classification and make it happen doing weights, volume, and bands. Wow. So she, at the end of when everything lifted and the shows were available and open again, it was maybe, what, a month? And she got second place. Wow. And we trained with just bands and a few dumbbells. Hey, Chase, I know we had an order there before, but let's, let's look at Michelle's video there. So what is this machine that she's on there? So this machine she's on is, um, it's called the Gluteator. It's made by a company called Dynavec out of Texas. And uh, really it's the, you know, it's a abduction machine. And in general, you look at it and it's, okay, you're abducting. But the way it's positioned, the way that's set up, is it so it really works high glutes and then it works your side glutes. Got it. So as far as, I mean, up to today and my knowledge, and I'm really close to the owners of that business, that's the only machine here in, in the whole Nevada area. Yeah, that's awesome. So we're fortunate to have Michelle in the studio today. Hi, Michelle. Scoot up, scoot up. Why aren't you talking? Can you? No, can't hear you. Ah. No. Yeah, here. Test, <laughs> test, one, two. Get out. Yeah, just. There you go. This is what we do, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't mind. So um, let's hear your story. How, COVID, and you still pushed through and did a show? I did, yes. Which show? Was it Kuklo? Or was it Samson? Uh. Was it in 2020? Yeah. Yeah. It was it was the Sam's, Ace. Oh, it was the Ace of Stage, Patrick Sampson. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was his show. And yeah. you came in second. I came in second to his now pro, <laughs> Nikki. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were you you training Nikki at the same time? No, at the time I wasn't training oh, Nikki. We're still. Nikki, we're Nikki still had been with uh, another very very good coach in the area, 
and uh, she was doing good. But those two were kind of, I wouldn't say nemesis, but they were each other's um, she was. I thought she was my only competition. And what <laughs> division were you in? At the time, it was bikini. Okay. But since I've moved up to figure. Okay. Figure, really? Yeah, it's more more muscle. Like, he, when I was training for bikini, they still want some muscle, but right. I like to train a little bit heavier. Mm-hmm. I look better with more muscle on it, but he would have to hold me back because you train slightly different Got for it. bikini. But Got I'm it. definitely happier in figure. And how tall are you? Um, like 5'9 and a quarter. So you're a little tall for bikini, I would say. Normally, girls are... No, so there's, there's all height classes. Yeah, um, the overalls t- tend to, I think, be a little shorter. As amateurs, okay. as yeah. as a, in the amateur part of portion are the NPC or even other leagues that do bikini ish stuff. Um, yeah, and I I'm, I'm I'm not against it. I'm just saying yeah. sometimes that yeah. can be a, a factor that you have no control over. But yep. you know how judges get that. Right. that they, do. they do. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but uh, so, how did you become a fitness junkie? Pull, come closer. Um, <laughs> gosh, I started when I graduated high school. My mother actually bought me a gym membership to Bally's. So I'm dating myself. <laughs> so Bally's. I was just working, at, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that was on the East Coast. And then maybe. Five years later, I was like, oh, I want to compete. And I actually did a bodybuilding show up in Rahway, New Jersey. And I just caught the bug. And I just always competed, always worked out, always on my own, never had a coach. I just read a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't quite get what competing was. And you have to have coaches. And I remember going to a national show and just, you know, placing last. <laughs> right. You know, but you felt good, but you didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. And right. I was just having a good time. And then um, I've had four children since, so competing for me was another reason to get into the gym and stay in the shape after having all these children. Right. And then um, three years ago, uh, Doc and I connected, and I was just like, hey, can you give me your opinion? I'm doing this other show. You know, and I was waiting for him to say, no, don't go on stage, because he's done that before to people. I love trainers to do that. Yeah. Um, Because I was full. I was like, oh, I felt like I had too many yes people Mm. around me. And then he's like, no, you could do it. And then since then, he's been my coach. But I've always been to the gym. It's my sanctuary. And and then I just fell in love with competing. And now it's more than just coaching trainer, right? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Are you guys married? No, No, we're not married. But no, I mean, just because there's not a piece of paper doesn't mean no. it's not. But we started the gym together, and okay. it's, yeah. it's definitely taken off. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And um, I, my experience with um, women, because I tend to have a lot of women clients, um, haven't really built my Las Vegas business back up, but um, I always thought that there's a really heavy price to pay if you're 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 not connected emotionally to who you are because a lot of women think that their placement is sometimes kind of tells them that they're not good enough if they don't place where they think they should place Mm -hmm. that's why i love when trainers say if you're not ready whether it's mentally or physically, right. don't go up because it's, it's it's you're tough. being objectified there. It's like yeah. you're not if you're not together, you can get messed up. How do you feel the the specifically the women's bodybuilding and and how to to navigate that? Um, like you said, you have to have a strong sense of self to get up there. Know that it is subjective um, when you go up. Um, because everybody works hard. And if you know that you, you did your best, and then it's in the hands of the judges. However, if you don't have, um, if you're not strong mentally, I would recommend maybe waiting. Because it can, it can, because the judges always do a great job. You can come off and think, oh, I should have done better. But then once you take a step back and you look and you're like, okay, fine, you know, it was fair. But yeah, it can really um, mess with your, with your head. Yeah. And do you prep? the same client sometimes meaning like do you teach them 
walkouts or posing and and you do the weights or no no i i mean i pretty much michelle is the support and backbone she's not really involved in the client in training of the client i since being here in the vegas area well even when i was in texas uh so in the vegas area i've partnered with some very 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 good and well-known pros and Olympians that are now my posing coaches. Ah. So I'm confident in my ability to teach people to pose, but that's not really my focus. And it's very time consuming. Mm. So I will teach them the basics. Mm -hmm. And right when I get to the point where I see I'm teaching them bad habits, mm -hmm. then because I don't believe in having my people spend money just to spend money. Mm -hmm. And not to sound, you know, opportunistic, but if they're spending money, it's not going in my pocket. Right. Then it should be going into a partner or a friend's pocket. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So my bikini posing coach is a local, and her name is um, Stacy Alexander. Okay. She's a four-time, five-time Olympian in bikini. Uh, she never won Olympia, but she was always right up in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can get into that a little bit, but the 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 judges and and the politics of getting into that top five yeah. top three is is yeah. a whole nother thing you have mm -hmm. to compete against yeah. right but um so you have that's your your posing coach go to just for bikini just for bikini mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have then, a different one for wellness now so wellness and figure i have latoria watts okay latoria watts is a three-time miss olympian in figure got it then my more muscular uh, things like women's physique, women's bodybuilding, and then all my men's, so men's physique, classic physique, and men's bodybuilding. My posing coach is um, <clears throat> Jeannie. Uh, oh, my God. She's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie. Yeah. Shout out to Jeannie. <laughs> we're, Sorry, we're... coach. <laughs> uh, but she's amazing, and she's two-time Arnold winner. And then top five Olympian as well. Um, we're working Is now. Is it working? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, you mentioned your, your genie. Yeah. And uh, let's, did she work on that guy, that, the first guy the video? No. no. But so, let's take a look at him and we'll see and we'll talk a little bit more about genie in a second. All right. So this is Joseph, and uh, he was my first male that I ever turned pro. This is at the national show in Miami, and this was probably four or five years ago. But um, <clears throat> Joe Brilliant, uh, just a great guy. He's a doctor. Um, he came up to me at – he had already competed at one show. And is this classic? This is classic physique. Yeah. And uh, he had come up to me, and he and I just had a good rapport, and we started talking. He had seen me backstage with a bunch of my other male clients, and he's like, man, I love your rapport with your clients and doing what we're doing. So uh, he had entertained the idea of hiring me, and then we talked, and he ended up signing on board. And it was funny, because at the time that he signed up with me, he and I were both training for shows. Right. Yeah, and um, I took him to a show in Pittsburgh, and he ended up beating me. <laughs> nice, nice. But it was worth it. I mean, were you in the same division? We were in the we were on the stage together. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was awesome. I mean, what better compliment than being beat by one of your people? You Nothing. Know what I, mean? I didn't. If if you're gonna be be but be beat by someone, that's who you want to get beat by. Right, Love and even. It. Even in his pro interview, somebody had asked him that, and they're like, who's your coach? And he's like, hey, Doc. <laughs> and then the lady giving him the interview, she's like, weren't you both on stage together? Right. You know, and then right. she's like, how do you feel about that? And I go, I didn't bring him here to lose. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I was proud of him. I was happy. And I was, I didn't lose any sleep or get butthurt about losing to him. Right. He, beat, he was better than me that day. 
So, Michelle, now that you have your own mic, scoot on up there. Okay. Um, I want to ask you, you, you've only had one coach now, yes. right, in life. So you don't, you're a little bit biased here. But <laughs> what do you think makes him such a special coach? <laughs> Put <laughs> so you on the spot. Because <laughs> um, I remember seeing him behind um, backstage a couple times. And he does, he's very attentive to his clients. Um, but he, when I first hired him, I said, I don't want to be part of a team. I don't want to be, you know, like, don't take videos of me. Don't do that. I just want to coach. I don't, because to me, in my mind, like the teams were just, was, was all smoke and mirrors and doesn't mean anything. And, um, but then I, for him, his team is he, he'll stay up, um, all night Friday doing their plans, answering questions. Um, and he will, he'll he spends a lot of time individually on each one. And it's not cookie cutter. Everyone is different. Every plan is different every week. Uh, he'll check in randomly with you. And I don't think a lot of coaches do that. I've trained with a couple people over the years, but nothing like this. And so. what about the emotional and, and mindset part of it? Does that come into play? For him? For you, for as the way he trains his clients. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you need somebody. Yeah, you need somebody there that kind of understands what you're going through. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then there's also integrity. You know, like I know you two connected on a different level, but like some trainers are in it for more than just training yeah, and, and I yeah and <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because when i was he was helping me for one show i don't um and i guess you helped me for two weeks yeah with the steve car and we were posing and when i was thinking about hiring him i was i grilled him i'm like um like how long have you been doing it have you ever slept with any of your clients do you have any <laughs> issues with your clients because there are a lot and i've, I've seen it um, that's all they want. They want to sleep with their clients. Yeah. I've heard bad stories yeah. and it's, you know, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. But he's, no, he's like, he's never, you know, he's never done that. I've, I've, I have all these girls in my backyard every day, you know, and I don't worry that, you know, things are going to go, right. you know, go right. left. Um, cause I, I've seen him and he's an, he's a gentleman Yeah. and I, he's professional <laughs> and he, yeah. he never crosses that line. He's, um, if he's going to help you with form, he's like, okay, I'm going to touch your shoulders now. You know, he looks, right. you know, he's, you know. Yep. You know. So Integrity that, and that's, is It's huge. Key. Yep. yep. I'm, I'm, yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, I mean, it's funny. It's kind of a longer story, but that's actually, I never wanted to be a prep coach. I did not want to do it. And my, the first lady I ever prepped, she came to me, but I basically said no every, fr every Monday for six weeks. Right. And then just to footnote it and make it fast, I looked at her and uh, I go, tell me one good reason why I should train you. Because I know nothing about bikini prep coaching or prep coaching other than at the time I had done my own right. preps and then I was married to another lady at the time and I had turned her pro. So, <clears throat> but she was in a more muscular, she was in women's physique and that was a little bit easier for me to, Right, grass. Right. Bikini is the package. I mean, it's beauty, it's form, it's a good suit, matching hair, the good, perfect, 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 not too muscular, not too, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. And that's what she wanted to do. And I was like, no, I know nothing about it. And then again, like I told you, that rusty gym that I was at, right. I'm like, I even told her, I go, there's 15 people in here that are considered good coaches. Go talk to them. <laughs> and she was like, what? And I'm like, I don't want to coach you. And then she kept coming back. And then finally, I was like, give me one more good reason. She goes, because I know you won't try to sleep with me. Nice. And so you got to understand, I was somewhat like, what's the word? Naive? Yeah, I guess naive. But I, lo I literally looked at her, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure my jaw hit the ground. But <laughs> I go, is that really an issue? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And I just looked at her and I was like, that sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. And so even at our gym, the Dog Pound Gym, it's 
you know, we set it up to where it's a private studio type gym in our backyard. And when I first bring people back there, whether it's women or men, the first thing I tell them is, look, when you come through that gate, it should be a sanctuary. All you're here to do is to better your physique, better your body, and not have to worry about anything else. Right. And, um, you know, and the, and it, you shouldn't have to worry about me or anything being inappropriate, but it should be where, okay, for an hour to an hour and a half, I don't have to worry about the kids. I don't have to worry about my husband. I don't have to worry about my wife. I'm just here to work out and have him kick my ass. And that's... Okay. I mean, that's what I want to be. And so walk me through the gym. So it's all outdoors? It's all outdoors. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's cool. There's a video of it on there. But um, I mean, it was slowly, we slowly just built it up. Chase, if you can find that on his Dropbox. I mean, if you can't, that's great, but yeah. we'll get to it. So, if, oh, oh, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, remember, yeah, I mean, it started with bands and, and had bands, festival. dumbbells, and a... Do we had a bench. We had a bench. Yeah. So, but do you have, like, a squat, squat rack and... So, I have one of those... Deadlift? <laughs> yeah, I have one of those home gym kind of universal Smith machines. Okay. But I have a leg press. Okay. We have the gluteator that you uh -huh. saw. The vertical press. We have a vertical press. I have a modified um, belt squat thing that we hooked onto one of the uh, CrossFit cages we bought. Um, so that basically you can get the full workout. Every, there's, there's nothing you, there's can't, nothing do. you can't do yeah. in our gym that you can do in a box gym or one of these other bigger gyms. Right. And I, and it's, and it's outside. Yeah. It's and I, I really pride myself that I have the ability to think outside the box to be able to make, all those things work. Right. Because when I look at my people and I go, oh, well, you need more rear delts or you need more hamstrings or you need more calves, we just get to it. It doesn't, I mean, it takes me 20 seconds to set something up and then do that. So, and you know, I mean, I've got a bunch of Olympic bars for free squat stuff. We have set it up with cables where you can do cable stuff, time under tension. We have dumbbells ranging from three pounds to yeah. 90 pounds. Okay. Uh, and then for me, because of my neck injury, I ended up buying one of those Mars bars because I can't, I can't cross load weight across my spine anymore. Got it. Got it. So I bought that selfishly for me and everybody loves it. Right. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so you, you're really excited when we, we looked at this next video of one of your younger clients. Yeah. Let's take a look at that and talk about him. <laughs> so this is Elias. So today, this young gentleman who's just incredible, he's only 13 years old. And this is, wow. his, this is his first show with Steve Carr. He ended up placing in the top five in teen. But so uh, he's just this... I mean, he's eager and he's excited and he runs at it and he's, I mean, I could tell this kid to stand on his big left toe, hold up a rabbit ears from the 70s, try to tune in his thing and do curls with another arm and he would do it. I mean, this kid's he's amazing. And uh, it was funny because backstage at the Steve Carr, everybody knows Jay Cutler, right? Yep. Jay Cutler comes walking back. And he's just standing there, and he didn't get all like starstruck and goofy mm -hmm. and run up to Jay like, oh, pay attention to me. He just stood there. And Jay walked up to him and they started talking. And the kid's just like, and then after it was over, he walks up to me and he's like, so can I win Olympia? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, if you get started at 13, hell yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I said, if I can't do it, I'll find a coach that can get you there. So how did that happen? That's how did he come to you? Like, was it uh, was it an injury? Was it like no? So it was actually or? it was actually at that show. So his dad, who's another client of mine, okay, um, they were both doing that show, and they weren't clients of mine at the time. But we had seen Elias out on stage, 
and I just started yelling. Like nobody was like, right. I mean, I'm a, <laughs> I'm we probably, noisy that day. I'm a, no, I'm a noisy coach from the stand, <laughs> but I love it. Right. And, um, there was nobody screaming or yelling for him. And I was like, Oh hell no. And right. I just started coaching him from the crowd. <laughs> and it was hindsight being what it was. We had talked after they actually hired me and he's like, I could hear you yelling. And I just did what you told me. To do. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. And then it was funny because I was backstage with another one of my males, Dennis. And Dennis is a mir miracle story in himself yeah. anyways. So I'm going to bounce around. No but Dennis came to me in February of 21. He had never been in a gym in his life. Wow. He came to me and he, I mean, he was 157 pounds of chewed bubble gum. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, within, what, 14 weeks? Oh, my god! He's literally, like... Ugh. Off his medicine. Yeah, so he was uh, type 2, getting close to insulin-dependent uh, diabetic, hypertension, high cholesterol, and he had, oh, low thyroid. At 157? Yeah. What? How tall? I don't know, what's he, like, 5'6", five, 5'7"? He's not yeah, that. He's not so that small. Guy. Yeah. Wow. But, and then, you know, he's, I think some of it is his ethnic background. I think it's just more genetically prone to have oh, those what, issues. What? He's Filipino. Oh, okay. But whatever. So, I mean, but the guy's just intense. Like he note, he takes notes and everything. He logs everything. He does this. And I'm literally like his third week of check-ins with me because I make all my all my people, whether you're an athlete or health and wellness, you have to check in with me on Friday. And I'm literally looking at him like three weeks later, and I'm like, now this guy does what I tell him. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and then it, and then it, like 14 weeks, uh, he comes and trains at the dog pound. And he gets done with his workout, and he's like, how do you think I do? And I go, man, you're killing it. You're doing great. You look good. And then he goes, and so he's 50. Yeah, he's 50. So he comes up to me and he's like, um, do you think I could do this? He's 50 and he had never been in a gym? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, you know what? I mean, maybe he did in school in the Philippines. I don't know. But, right, right. I uh, guess that's a different culture. Yeah. Okay. But I go, dude, Yeah. And he goes, do you think I could do well? And I go, I'll guarantee you top five. And he's like, how can you guarantee me top five? And, you know, without sticking my foot in my mouth, I'm that good. <laughs> I'm confident. Because to me, it's not luck. It's preparation. Right. If you do what I tell you to do and you're disciplined and you have purposeful action in what you do, with my knowledge, with my experience, plus with what I bring to the table with other people, I have you prepared. And I don't, I mean, yes, it's any given Sunday. There might be five more or five better people on that day. Right. But odds are my system works and it's proven. Right. I've put over 500 people on stage and I've had a handful that only have not placed in the top five. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so do you only do one-on-one -on -one training at your home gym at the dog pound or is it do you do group training tell me the, so talk, talk a little bit about what you do we do one-on-ones that kind of slide over into a little bit of group okay but i am not a group trainer okay number one i don't have the mentality for it i don't have the patience no <laughs> <laughs> and uh so i may have four different people in the backyard at one time but they're all doing their thing got it now, luckily, we've set it up, and I have enough knowledge that I can run them. So, you know, in my brain, I'll think, okay, here's a circuit, but you're here for five sets, you're here for five sets, you're here for five sets, and then I monitor them. Got it. But Got it. I don't like the whole cookie-cutter aspect. You pay me for cause and effect. Right. And, you know, you have great guns, but I have, may have somebody who – weak in the arms mm. and they need more of that you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's where i really pride myself and i'm like hey i give individual and i think about it 
But there'll be, I mean, there's nights where I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll go make notes. I'll just start thinking about somebody and I'll make notes and, okay, here's what we're going to incorporate. But even some of my athletes, you know, I'll have their plan set for them for the week. And then two days into the week, I'm like, no, I don't like it. And I'll go redo it. Mm. Cool. I love that. Um, so what do you think about nutrition as a rule? I know I'm sure it's not cookie cutter either, but do you have any um, strong philosophies as, as far as protein or or vegan or does it matter? You can find uh, it. If you come to me and you say, look, I want to be vegan, okay. Now, I'll tell you the truth. It's a pain. For me as a coach, it's a pain in the ass. So right. I'll charge you more for it. Got it. That's just the truth. It's a lot more work. Well, I have to do a lot of research and how, if you come to me and say, hey, I want to look like this, well, then, you know, I mean, m most people know you got to add protein to create more muscle. Right. So finding quality uh, proteins and being able to feed them and being able to feed them enough variety to where they don't go the hell with it, right. it sucks, I'm out. It's a you lot know what of I mean? work. Yeah, it's tons of work. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, you know, unfortunately, it's more about feeding the machine. And it's not about, uh, you know, gourmet food or whatever. Now, I get it. I mean, for me, I actually like eating more meal prep lifestyle. I have some gut issues myself. I have some gut health issues. And, you know, I eat the same five to eight meals a day, and I've done that for 10 years. But yeah. for me, it's about feeding the machine. Yeah. And I find it's even easy. now, yeah. <laughs> and I find even now, if I go do a refeed or a reward meal, I end up, you know, it end up causing me either gas or I get the runs or I, my gut gets distended. And I don't know. And if you have the time, if you just have the patience and the discipline, you can season your food so you're not eating shoe leather. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Nobody said the meal prep food had to suck. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so what's next for your both brands and your uh, your internet training? What's what's going on? What's What do we have to look forward to, if anything? Um, I've got a, quite a few number of athletes that are going to be competing in the Samson Showdown in March. Then I have some more that are going to be competing in the Jay Cutler in April. Uh, we have a bunch that are slotted to go attempt to get their pro card in end of June. Uh, I have some Texas clients that are going to do a big show in Texas in the middle of June. I have a New Jersey client that's going to do a show in July. I've got some people who are in a structured offseason right now are going to come back more towards the fall and do shows in August and September. A uh, big thing for us as Team Zone and as the Dog Pound Gym, we're there at the end of the month here on the 29th or 30th is the seminar. Yeah. So 20. the head the head judge for the IFBB, Sandy Williamson, she's putting on the first ever national women's posing clinic here in Vegas. Mm. And uh, it's an it's a you had to sign up for it, and it's an invite with a standby list. But uh, we sponsor uh, them, we sponsor Samson, uh, we sponsor Center Podium as well. So I'm uh, a smaller sponsor for them, those two organizations. And then we just kicked in some stuff for Sandy, so like she'll give away. Uh, I'm giving away, I'm going to pay for some random person to do a show, hmm. uh, do yeah. that. That's it's, later this month. Yeah, and that's yeah. another thing, too, with competing. It is an expensive sport. So not is only, it? yes, it, you're spending, you know. Well, it's an expensive hobby. Hobby, I should say, <laughs> yeah. And it is, and sometimes, you know, even when you turn pro, the payoff, you know. May not yeah, be getting, but, but just right. be prepared, yeah, because what you spend money on your coaching, and then you have tanning, you have makeup for the women, you have your jewelry, you have your suits, yeah, yeah, and your entry fees, yeah, and yeah, yeah. So it can start to add. Just be prepared for that. Yeah. Hey, uh, can you two talk for a second? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> um, so you mentioned earlier about the uh, having like four women in your backyard and yes. trusting your man. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's kind of a next level, you know. For it's hard, I'm I'm sure, or at least maybe at first it was. But how do how do you incorporate that in your lifestyle? Um, because I want the women there to feel comfortable too. Mm. So um, I like to be approachable. They have to, you know, when they first come, I make sure I'm there when he's talking to them. Um, I know what he and I have. Mm -hmm. I he's not gonna do. Like, I just trust him. I, I have other things to worry about. Right. right. <laughs> then, you know, and also because he is, um, he has integrity. I mean, some of these girls coming in, they could be my children. They could be my daughters. Right. And that's, you know, and that's, you don't cross that line. And he would never right. do that. And I know what I am. I'm confident enough in who I am right. that I don't worry about that. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's just, really kind of amazing to have a gym at your home that uh as a, a male trainer yeah. bringing in female trainers and having a female presence that kind of just squashes all the nervousness around that going yes. to some man's home to have him train you because it does yeah it does sound kind of, <laughs> yeah i'm going to his house and you know it's you know yeah yeah we try to make them feel comfortable i'm always there my, my kids are always there they'll come home from school and they're in and out so it's not you know, yes, it is, you know, it's a private gym, but it's not, you know, there's no bars around it or anything like that. And then, you know, I just thought about the gyms and like, so what's, what's your cardio philosophy? I and mean, a lot of people have different ideas about it and maybe cardio for, you know, prepping is one thing and then cardio for wellness is another thing. What's your general... Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. There are two different things. I mean, it depends on what that individual's specific wants and needs and how they want to look. But, uh, I mean, it's it's an individual again. I, I, right now, I'm doing over two hours of cardio because my body loves to be fat. <laughs> <laughs> even, even as disciplined in my, as I am in eating, right. my body wants to hold on. Right. My, my bikini pro, Nikki... She was doing oh. 42 minutes a week. A week. Or a week, or, and I, she was yeah. getting too lean. Yeah. Wow. 42 minutes a week. I want her metabolism. <laughs> right? <laughs> and she's almost 50 years old, and yeah. I was like, oh, we need to slow. Because, you know, when I just was learning how to do her, you know, I said, okay, 30 minutes post-cardio, three days a week, and then two fasted. The next week she showed up and she was emaciated and like, <laughs> yep. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so I had to adjust for it. You right, know? right. So it's a different thing for each person's yeah. metabolism. Yeah. Right. You're doing two hours a day? Me, man. By the time I get ready to hit my show in June, I'll probably be three or four hours. Wow. What, and what's your what's your flavor? What do you like? What do you do? Stairs. Stairs. Stair. I mean, to, for me, my body let goes when I'm on the stairs. Yeah. I mean, I've been pretty serious for three yeah. weeks now. Yeah. And you have stairs at home, at the home gym? Yeah, yeah. so we have two step mill. Uh, she has a stair master, the yep. belt. And I have, remember the old stair masters? Uh-huh. My body loves that one. I'll, I'll Those lose are more harder yes. than yes. the gauntlet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have two bikes. Yeah. We have a recumbent bike, and then we have a stationary bike. But uh, And then I was even looking on... Uh, was it marketplace? But there's another one just like mine that I think I'm gonna go buy. Have because I, we have this company that comes out every three months and they certify the gym. They go through it and safety chain it. They check nice. all the cables. They adjust our yeah. treadmills and our, our cardio equipment. And then, I mean, they're just good to have on board. Plus, it gives me some more legitimacy having them back it up and say, "Hey, right. this place is safe." You know, right, right. Um, wow, man, it, it sounds like you're really creating a nice little community there. Um, yeah. yeah, we have a family. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I mean, I, you know, I walked in, unfortunately, I walked in on what you guys were talking about. But the one thing is, is when you were talking about the safety and how maybe women go, oh, I don't want to go train, you know, 
husbands, partners, significant others, they're always invited. Yeah. And if you just, part of our gym, we even set up like a little lounge area out there. We have Mr. set up in the summer, but we have a refrigerator, a microfo- microwave, right. all that stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, if you just want to sit out there and watch, make sure, you know, right, to give okay. them right. a sense of calmness and yeah. let them get to know me. I don't yeah. Know. yeah, his client brought her kids yeah. Um, yesterday. We're kid friendly. We're yeah. dog friendly. Yeah. Mostly nice. dog friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a blast. Um, so how do people get in touch with you if they want to become part of either team? The uh, so just my Instagram is at team zone t- at team underscore zone, and then uh, you can get me at um, team zone at gmail dot com. Okay. And then I don't really want to give out my phone number until yeah. we get to that barrier. Right. Awesome. But, um, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm always willing to – I love what I do. And if my pension was enough to pay all the bills, I would do it for free. And I'm not kidding. Nice. Watching these people – I have – I got to talk about Jackie. You do have to talk about Jackie. <clears throat> so I have this health and wellness client. Her name's Jackie, and she's out in California. She's one of my athlete's cousins by marriage. Okay. This lady's lost 167 pounds. Wow. And she's a beast. And how long? How long? 14 months. Wow. So I, I mean, she wants to go after it and go after it and drop it lower, but I'm like, okay, you know, for safety reasons and health reasons, we can only take so much off of you per month and still be within safety margins. And I said, and you got to remember, your skin has to stay with you as you shrink physically and muscularly and how you have that physiological shift from fat or adipose tissue to muscular tissue. If we drop you too fast, you're going to have skin folds that so you're going to have to have surgery. So we, I told her, I go... We're going to take you down nice and slow and healthy. Make sure your heart can take it. Make sure your pulmonary system can take it. We're going to get labs done to make sure that your liver and your kidneys are good. And we roll. And she she started with COVID. So she started her first six months were at her house. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love she did her home people home. that took that route on during COVID instead mm-hmm. of the other route, the right. drinking and the right. eating crap route. Yeah. Yeah. Which many people did. <laughs> if you scroll back through the Team Zone's IG, uh-huh. you'll see her doing dips off her coffee table. <laughs> She's got the bands, you know, off of her door seal. Right. She did. She probably lost 30, 35 pounds in her living room with bands and dumbbells. Nice. I was so proud of her. What And what meal solution did you do for her? Is she? Uh, no, she's just standard, but... um. You know, I'll change it up a little bit, but I have her eating seven meals a day. Okay. So they're smaller portion, but we watch it. And, you know, in the beginning, she was like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to eat the same thing every And I'm like, okay, but. Which suck do you want? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, I mean, I try to switch it up. And, right. you know, when people will come at me, um, you know, like, can we switch this out for this? And I'll go, yeah. And then I'll go in the research and, okay, what protein can I get with a nutritional value of what I need for this? Because it's not just like, for me, I don't think, okay, I just need to replace 35 grams with 35 grams. Right. Well, salmon has a certain percentage of good fat. But do you know that there's steelhead trout that tastes just like salmon that has different nutritional values? And it's cheaper. So, again, like when I talk... I mean, I try to be as economically cognizant of my clients right. to help them out because, number one, selfishly, the, the more money I help them save and the more we do it, the more they want to stay with me. Right. You know right. what I mean? Yep. And, you know, I'm lucky because I have some companies that will back me up, help out with, uh, you know, we can get some things for certain people who, you know, and I have... I mean, there's some people that I train for free just because I think it's right. You know nice. What I mean? Nice. Awesome. Man, this is really great, man. Thank you so much. And thank you thank for you jumping in. Much. Of course. Um, uh, 
you are an inspiration um and uh i want to do more things with you so um right. we'll talk about that after but you guys got to watch this whole episode you're gonna love it um like share and until next time fit fam i'm out <laughs>